last time that you were really, really angry? Sometimes in my life, I've noticed that when I get angry, I wanna just stay angry and stay upset for, it could be a number of different reasons, but there are times in my life where I just really wanna sit in my anger and frustration. But inevitably, almost every time that I find myself getting really, really upset, someone comes in and tries to make me laugh and, and change my perspective and lighten up the whole situation. And usually that person is my wife. For example, last week we were out celebrating our 10 year anniversary. Go us, 10 years, we really did it, right? But we had a great time. We went to the city, we had some good coffee, we had a great lunch, we got to actually do some bike riding along the lakefront in Chicago. It was perfect weather, it was fantastic. It was a fantastic, great, day. But to end this fantastic day, we were going to leave the parking garage, and I, of course, was driving, and we were pulling out of the parking garage, and I thought I was clear, I was good to go. Turns out, I wasn't so clear, and I smashed the side of my car, the passenger side of my car, against one of those concrete pull things, you know, that like block the, the entryway, and it just obliterated my car. You guys, I was so, so angry at myself for not being extra cautious. And my wife was kind of angry at first too, but we had an awkward drive ahead of us because we were both so screaming mad about this. We had to drive like two hours to get to my in-laws house to go pick up my kids. And we're getting into the drive and I'm still just, I'm so angry, I wanna be mad, I wanna be left alone, I don't wanna talk, I don't wanna do anything. And a little bit into the drive, my wife starts kinda of like poking at me and getting me to try and laugh. And she said something really profound. She looked at me and she said, hey, I know you made a mistake, but I don't want you to let this ruin the rest of our day. We had a great time today. You made a mistake. It was an accident. You didn't mean to do it, but don't let this ruin the rest of your day. And in that moment, I had a choice to make. I could choose to stay really angry, really mad, really frustrated. I could choose to just sit in that anger, or I could choose to change my perspective on the whole thing. And I could choose to let go of that anger and not let it ruin my day. I want you to pause this video right now, wherever you're watching, and just talk amongst yourself, amongst your group. When was the last time that you were really, really angry? When was the last time that you got so upset that you just, you wanted to stay mad, you wanted to stay angry, and you wanted everybody to leave you alone? Talk about that. What was the situation? What happened? Did someone come and help you change your perspective, or did you actually stay in that place of anger and frustration? So go ahead and pause the video wherever you're at, take a couple minutes and talk about that, and then come back and press play, and we'll keep going. Ready? Go. So we're continuing in our series called Soundtrack uh, as we study the Psalms. And today we're talking about Psalms of reorientation. What I love about the Psalms of reorientation is that they remind us that anger, that bitterness, that frustration, things like brokenness, disorientation, it reminds us that those kinds of things don't get the last word. Psalms of reorientation are here to remind us that Jesus is king, that God is actively working in this world to rescue, to redeem, to restore all things for all time. And one day, Jesus is going to come back and that promise of full and complete restoration and redemption will be accomplished. Psalms of reorientation remind us that God is actively working to bring about redeeming transformation in us and in our world today. And so I believe that there are three areas that the Psalms of reorientation show us that God is actively working to bring about this redeeming transformation. Here they are, three areas. In my community, in myself, and in my world. Three areas that God is actively working to bring about redeeming transformation. And we're gonna talk about each of those three areas as we study the Psalms of reorientation. <music> Psalms of reorientation first remind us that God wants to bring about redeeming transformation in my community. Psalm 66 verses 1 through 9 say this. It says, Shout for joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. 
Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip? Jump over to verse 16. It says, Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. So God wanted to completely transform the people of Israel. He wanted to be able to not just work in them, but work through them and remind the rest of the world around them how powerful and great God actually is. And we see that happening in the verses that we just read. As the people are reminding each other about God's goodness, about his greatness, about all of the things that God has done for them, they're allowing those truths, those promises of God to reorient their perspective on everything. And as they are reminding each other of the promises of God and of the goodness of God, they're actually telling the world around them just how great and good and powerful God really is. And in the same way, when we as a community of people experience redeeming transformation that God wants to bring to us as a community, when we remind each other about the promises of God found in the Bible and just how great and good God has been to us, we can allow those truths, those things to reorient our perspective on everything. And as that happens, the rest of our, of our community and the rest of the world around us looks at us as a community of people and sees the difference that God is doing in us as a group of people. They can see the redeeming transformation happening right in front of them. That's the truth. God wants to completely change your community, my community. He wants to not just work in our community, but through our community and show the rest of the world around us, the rest of the communities around us, that God is still great, that God is still good, and he's still worthy of being praised. God wants to completely transform your community. And you can use that word community however you want, whether it's your church, whether it's your school, whether it's your friend group, whatever that looks like. God wants to completely change and transform, bring about this redeeming transformation to your community. But the truth is, in order for God to first change a community, first he has to change you, right? Redeeming transformation within a community first starts with ourselves, with me, doesn't it? Let's look at another psalm together. So we're going to be looking at Psalm 73. Asaph is the guy who wrote uh, Psalm 73. And verses 1 through 15, Asaph is voicing a lot of concern, a lot of frustration to God. And he actually gets to a point where he starts to blame God for ignoring everything that's going on and turning a blind eye to these people that are not getting the justice that Asaph thinks they deserve. And then we get to verse 16. So the first 15 verses, Asaph is voicing this concern and frustration to God. And then we pick up Psalm 73, verse 16. This is what it says. But when I thought how to understand this, all this frustration and concern, when I thought how to understand this, it seemed to me a, weary, a wearisome task until I went to the sanctuary of God. Then I discerned their end. And we're going to jump down to verse 21. Psalm 73, 21 says this. When my soul was embittered, when I was pricked in heart, I was brutish and ignorant. I was like a beast towards you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Last verse, verse 28. It says, but for me, it is good to be near to God. I have made the Lord God my refuge that I may tell of all your works. So the second thing, Psalms of reorientation remind us that God is working redeeming transformation in myself. We see this in this Psalm with Asaph. What was so cool is that Asaph had all of this concern, all of this doubt, all this anger and frustration, but he went to God in worship and brought all of these things to God in the context of worship. Asaph goes to the tabernacle into the presence of God and he brings God all of these concerns. And he goes in to worship God expecting God to answer him. Instead of running away from God, instead of staying angry, instead of staying bitter and frustrated, you name it, Asaph chooses to go worship God instead of running away from him in anger. And what is interesting is we have that same choice today. We can choose to do the same thing. If we will choose to worship God, if we will choose to bring our disorientation into the presence of God, into worship with God, he can show us how he can reorient our perspective on everything. And we see this. Look at verses 25 and 26 again in our psalm. They say, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. Listen to this, verse 26. My flesh and my heart may fail, 
but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That is the redeeming transformation that was happening in Asaph himself. And when we choose to bring our disorientation, our frustration, our anger, our hurt, all of it, when we choose to bring that to God in worship, he can bring us redeeming transformation within ourselves. But we have a choice to make. We can choose to run away. We can choose to stay angry and frustrated and broken and hurt and concerned. Or we can bring all of that to God in worship and say, God, I need you to reorient my perspective. I need you to redeem me and bring redeeming transformation in myself. We have that choice just like Asaph. All throughout history, followers of God have been encouraged to continue to be reminded that God is working this redeeming transformation in all of creation. The problem is that we have that it doesn't happen in the time that we want it to. We want justice now. We want redeeming transformation in all things right now. But that's not always how God works. What I love, though, about the Psalms of Reorientation is that they remind us that Jesus is still king, that God is still in the process of redeeming all of creation, all of people for all of time, and it's going to happen in a day to come. Let's look at another Psalm together. Look with me at what Psalm 111 says. This is Psalm 111. It says, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Psalms of reorientation remind us that God is actively working to bring about redeeming transformation in my world. This psalm is a great reminder to us that God is king of all. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and he has done amazing things for all his people. Look again at verse 7. It says, The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts or his promises are trustworthy. Verse 8, They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. And then again, verse 9, it says, He sent, God sent redemption to his people He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. This is a great psalm that reminds us that God is king of everything. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, and he has done amazing things for his people. He has provided, he is gracious, he is merciful, he is trustworthy. Look again at verse 7. It says, The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts or his promises are trustworthy. Verse 8, they are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. And then verse 9, God sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Now that last part of verse 9, he has commanded his covenant forever, is really amazing. Because God not only brings redeeming transformation, he doesn't just rescue and restore now in this world. But one day, he's going to do that forever, like forever, forever. And it's amazing to believe and understand that God can redeem us now. But one day in a time to come, God is going to completely restore, completely renew, completely bring about this promise of redeeming transformation to all people, to all creation for all time, literally for forever. And this is a great challenge to us, a great encouragement to us to remind ourselves that even though we're living in a time where we want God to fix all of the brokenness, to fix all of the bad things, the anger, the hurt, we want all of that to be fixed now, we're just not there yet. But God can be trusted. He is faithful and he is true. And all of his promises will be brought out in faithfulness and in trust from him. And we can trust and believe that one day, and the time to come. This promise of full redeeming transformation for all people, for all creation, for all time 
will be accomplished. God is continuing to work out this promise of redeeming transformation in my world, in your world. And one day, in a time to come, it will be fully established. It will be fully brought into reality that God will restore and redeem all things, all people, all creation for all time. Psalms of reorientation remind us that God is working redeeming transformation in three areas, in my community, in myself, and in my world. But the question is, what do we need to do to better see that redeeming transformation? What do we need to do to better perceive that redeeming transformation, better be a part of what God is trying to do in my community, in myself, and in my world? And I think there are three really quick things that we need to do to help us reorient our perspective on everything, to move from a state of disorientation to reorientation the way that God wants us to. There are three things, really quick, here they are. The first thing is we need to pray. We need to continue to pray to God and bring our concern to him, our anger, our hurt, our brokenness, all of those things. We need to not hide from God, but take those things and bring them to him in prayer. And you can actually use the word pray as an acronym to help you guide your prayer life. And I want to go through that for you really quick so you can use that to help you as you pray. So letter P stands for praise. Just thank God for all of the great things that he's done for you, for the big things, for the small things, and everything in between. Just start to thank God for who he is, for what he's done for you, and for all of the things that he continues to bless us with. The letter R stands for repent. Ask God to forgive you of your sin, and then ask God to give you the strength to turn away from your sin and turn towards Jesus instead. Letter A stands for ask. This is where we bring requests to God. We, we bring our concerns, our questions to him. We ask him to continue to bring about redeeming transformation to ourselves, to our world, to our communities. If we have any other questions that we need to ask God or talk to him about, that's where we can do that. And then finally, letter Y stands for yield. We need to simply be quiet, which is not always easy for us. But we need to be quiet. We need to yield ourselves to God's voice. We can look to scripture we can look to the Bible to better uh, see how God wants to speak to us as we be still and be quiet before him. So the first thing is pray. The second thing is we need to continue to bring praise to God. Praise, that's the second thing. It is not an accident that all throughout the Psalms, this idea of praise, of singing songs of praise and worship to God is littered throughout the Psalms. And many of the Psalms themselves are, are songs to God or prayers to God. But we need to continue to sing songs of thanks and praise to God. There's something really special about singing a song that is rooted in biblical truth. It reminds our souls that God is still good, that he's still worthy to be praised, even when everything around us seems so disoriented, so chaotic, so out of control, or even when we're so angry and we're lacking peace and it's hard to see what God is doing in our lives. When we stop in those moments and we continue to praise God and sing of all the great things that he's done for us, God is able to reorient us into a different perspective. So we pray, we praise, and then the last thing is we need to be patient. And this is something that is very simple to understand, but for so many of us, it's not easy to actually do. But we have to continue to be patient. What we need to continue to remind ourselves of as we look to the Psalms of reorientation they remind us that God is still king. God is still in control. And one day, in a time to come, Jesus will come back. And this full promise of rescuing and redeeming and restoring all things will come true. But we're not in that reality quite yet. And so as we pray, as we praise, we have to continue to be patient with God and trust that one day, in a time to come, God will fully restore, fully rescue, and fully bring about this redeeming transformation to all of our communities, to all of us individually, and to our entire world. Disorientation doesn't have to get the last word. These Psalms of reorientation remind us that God is still good. God is still working up to bring about redeeming transformation in our communities, in ourselves, and in our world. We love you guys. We'll see you soon.